People in Boston cherish the public garden for its combination of nature and design, but a central attraction is something that makes the park even more human. The sculpture representing the column of ducklings headed by Mrs. Mallard from the well-known children's book by Robert McCloskey. But the sculpture itself has led to another sequel or a whole series of them with changes in themes and costumes for different seasons and occasions. And there's yet one more sequel, a book called Ducks on Parade. To tell us about the book is the editor and the creator of the sculpture, Nancy Sheeran. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Nancy. My pleasure. Thrilled to be here. Nancy, a, a lot of us uh, got to know the Robert McCloskey book from way back. Uh, um, I imagine you're one of them, perhaps. Um, so how did that and maybe some other th things get to the point where you decided to do this sculpture? Oh, we're going back to the sculpture, yes. The genesis of the sculpture, yes. Oh, that's an interesting. My husband was a professor at MIT and the new head of architecture and planning and his wife came to Boston. And it turned out they had two boys, they had twin boys who were about six years old. Anyway, as one does when a new person comes to the faculty, we started to entertain them. The mother, it turns out, was a, uh, interested in how children use the city. And when she and the boys and the husband all went into the park, these young boys who knew the book said, mommy, where are the ducks? So Suzanne DiMaggio, who was this young lady, said to me, you know, Nancy, I think we should put the ducks in the Boston Public Garden. And I said, no, you can't do, we can't do that. That's, that's private land. It's, it's sacred, you can't do it. She said, yes, we can. <laughs> and then we went through the process of doing this. Um, we had to get somebody to be our, to sponsor us. And that was Henry Lee, who was the Friends of the Public Garden. And we had to go through all sorts of permitting and so forth. But the most important thing was to meet Robert McCloskey because we needed to deal with the copyright you know, my life is very love, love lucky. I'm always having nice things happen. It turned out a friend of mine was a good friend of Robert McCloskey's. So she, when I told her about this project, she said, well, I'm gonna tell him about you. So he said, when can I meet these two wonderful women? <laughs> and he was coming down from uh, Maine and uh, he came to my house, the most amazing, magic thing that happened was when he and his wife came to meet me. It was though he was coming out of his own books. He looked like what he'd been drawing in his books. And this is very interesting because I think we artists, we all, you know, we draw and we know ourselves. So here was this man as though he and his wife were coming out of his book. Anyway, he came, I showed him my sculpture. I had made a little maquette of the ducks, a little model. And he sort of looked at it. And then his wife said, come on, that's, that's wonderful, I like it. So come on, Bob. <laughs> so he, they came back about six weeks later and I made prototypes, a Mrs. Mallard and three babies in clay. And they were very rough. He looked at them and he said, you know, um, they look kind of big to me. I said, well, you're used to working on paper where you're working on two or three inches and I'm working on feet. <laughs> anyway, it was a snowy, snowy day. We went out with, I had a studio where there were children and the children, a nursery school. And we took these ducks out and just understand they were clay and they were very rough, but these children were just going into, uh, go to their nursery school and they jumped on these stocks like they ran to them. <laughs> so Mrs. McCloskey and Mr. McCloskey and my partner and I, we all looked at this. It was a, a magical moment. And that's how the ducks happen. <laughs> it's a little long story. No, but... Well, it, it, it's very typical of, of what, what the sculpture does because it, this isn't just sculpture. This is public art. It interacts with its surroundings. And that means people act differently. There, there's a difference in their behavior. And then we look at the people and I'm thinking, these people are like the ducks and the ducks are like the people. Exactly. <laughs> it was, uh, I don't know, there was sort of a lot of magic that happened in this whole process, I have to tell you. Now, of course, what happens next is you go down there on a given day and you see the ducks are dressed up for something. 
you know, it could be the Patriots win the Super Bowl. You see Patriots things on them or the women's uh, march takes place and, and they're all wearing these pink things. Uh, what's what's going on with these? Uh, it's hard to tell. You know, it all started with um, sort of holidays where the ducks got dressed up with their hats. Uh, I think kind of Easter with the Easter bonnet. I think that's how the, it all started, except way back in the very first, in the beginning, the very first birthday party, we had, um, uh, everybody was all dressed up and we had, uh, we had uh, duck punch and duck cookies. And that was way back in 1987, which was the first uh, birthday. Anyway, somehow it all started. And then all of a sudden when the Bruins won the Stanley Cup, we saw these, they were dressed up then various things happened and it became a little bit political. So various things happened. As you say, the, the march was political. Then there, I don't know if you have pictures of the ducks that were in cages. And this was a protest about the immigration and how the children were being dressed up in mallard, that mallard stuff, which was, they were in cages. And this is a powerful, this was an indication of how powerful uh, public art can be, because here is a sculpture that showed these ducks, and they were incarcerated. And uh, anyway, we there were happy things too. And uh, when the Celtics won this, and when the Patriots won that, all sorts of things. Any sort of event, it seemed people were dressing up the ducks, and, and they're still doing it, by the way. I think we may have to have another. another. The, the last time I checked and took a photo, yeah, they, they were wearing something else. They, yeah. they, these ducks have a way of moving on. Yeah, that's, that's a wonderful uh, picture of uh, uh, Mrs. Ginsburg. <laughs> In the robes? Yeah. So uh, I don't know, whatever it is, there's something about it. We don't know most of the time who is dressing them up. I know a few people who have told me that they have actually done it, but there's something about the fact that people take this kind of time, this kind of energy, the amount of time and it takes to dress up. Don't forget, I know what it's like to make nine sculptures. It's not just one. And to make eight little baby dresses or whatever, costumes, and then Mrs. Mallard, and to make sure, and if you ever saw any of them, they are exquisitely made. People have, I mean, one person just knitted a, a great big sweater and it said BLM on it, which was, again, was kind of uh, political. But, you know, people care. And what is it about it? There's something about these ducks. There's something magical about these ducks. There's something about I think the fact that it's about families and families are made up of all sorts of different uh, people, um, whatever, it doesn't make any difference, but a family is a family. There's something about the togetherness. There's something about birth. We're sitting on the eggs, Mrs. Mel, you learn about what she's doing as a mother. And then we're talking about uh, how we keep promises, for example. I think the most important thing is about the fact that Mrs. Mallard is met with her. She goes to the island at the very end and she meets her husband and he's there. And so there's a big thing about promises. I feel that most of my sculptures have a message as well. Since, um, so I'm really happy that this is, was the first really big major uh, public art sculpture that I did. I, I, I've seen your pandemic sculptures, so I know these these messages can sometimes be very, very serious and unsettling, maybe in the best sense of that word. I want to ask you about one other sequel to this, though. Uh, I think a replica of this sculpture, if I'm not mistaken, was given some years ago to Raisa Gabachova, the wife of uh, uh, Mikhail Gabachov, and now they, they're in a, a park in Moscow, Novodievichy Park? That is correct. They are. Um, I was part of the 1991 START Treaty. And so I sort of traveled with two first ladies for, for a week, which is kind of exciting. Uh, Mrs., um, Mrs. Gorbachev loved the ducks. Um, when Mrs. Um, Bush gave the 1990 um, talk at uh, Wellesley College, she, Mrs., Mrs. Gorbachev was with her. And then they made a stop at the 
ducks. And Mrs. Gorbachev apparently said, I love those ducks. So it turns out that, uh, shortening the story, that Mrs. Bush gave these ducks to uh, Mrs. Gorbachev on behalf of the children of the, of the United States and the, G, uh, the USSR at that time. Mrs. Gorbachev found, looked at some seven or eight different sites to find the most beautiful site for the ducks. So she was very responsible and very involved in this, which was so sweet. She's a, she was a teacher. Um, and so uh, when the ducks were installed, she went and talked about, talked about each one of the ducks and named them uh, as a teacher would so the children could learn what their names were. And of course, oh, the names are alphabetical, Jack, Jack, Black, Black. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, just like the streets in the back bay. Uh, <laughs> finally, you know, I, we've all experienced uh, these uh, costumes serially and they're all brought together now in the book just in time for mother's day of course so if, if people want to find this and experience this in a different uh, way almost like in a gallery uh, what, what's the best way for them to follow up with that oh well, i have a website which is www.schon my last name dot com very easy you can find it and there's a store and if you order the books from me i will sign them and I will sign them to whomever you would like them signed to. So it would be very special. And I'd appreciate it if you'd like to buy them from me. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them, of course, from Brandeis University Press and some of the bookstores. So I'm not saying that you should necessarily just get them from me. But if you want to have them signed, especially, then uh, I would suggest that you go to www. S-C-H-O-N.com. <laughs> we, call, we call it the local business discount. A great present for Mother's Day or Grandmother's Day, whatever. Well, thank you very much for joining us and happy Mother's Day to you as well. Uh, and that we all look forward to having this on our show tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> that was Nancy Shuren, and the book is called Ducks on Parade with an exclamation point.